We'll now be talking about the condition of hyponatremia. Now hyponatremia is when we see levels of sodium less than 135 milliequivalents per liter in the blood. And there's some important things to remember all the time about sodium. Um, first of all, it is the most abundant electrolyte in the uh, extracellular fluid, and it is a good indicator of the body-water balance. Water follows sodium. So that always helps you figure out what's going to happen when you have changes and shifts to an inadequate amount of sodium. The other key point to think of when we're talking about sodium is that the kidneys are responsible for excreting sodium from the body. So any changes in the kidneys are going to affect your sodium balance. So what is the picture here? Well, we have someone who has ears and has a very fatigued look. And the overall body appearance in terms of hydration will vary depending on if we're talking about a depletional or a dilutional hyponatremia. And I'll talk a little more about that in just a minute. There's confusion. And we also see a sense of kind of feeling nauseous, kind of green in the stomach not hungry, and sometimes vomiting, which again, if you think about what happens with fluids during vomiting, it's a problem. There's also muscle cramps, weakness, and fatigue. Sometimes you'll see tremor. We can also see changes in the blood pressure, which, again, depending on whether it's dilutional or depletional, may end up being elevated or decreased. So if we talk about dilutional hyponatremia first, uh, we see signs and symptoms consistent with hypervolemia. And because there's excessive water in the system, you have a um, dilutional low sodium level. So, so much water in ratio to the sodium produces that dilutional hyponatremia. So the situation here would be a high blood pressure, weight gain, typically a bounding rapid pulse, and a high urine specific gravity. When we talk about depletional hyponatremia, this is often seen with hypovolemia. In other words, there's been so much fluid loss that there's been a corresponding sodium loss. And in this presentation, the patient has a low blood pressure, dry skin, and a low urine-specific gravity. So they're really excreting a lot of fluid or losing it in other ways, such as vomiting. So two different causes creating the same sodium imbalance of hyponatremia. So what's a nurse to do? Well, first of all, if possible, always look for the cause of the imbalance with the fluids. And if possible, um, address that. If there's been inadequate sodium intake, certainly it's easy enough to increase sources of sodium, but to tell you the truth in the American diet, Western diet, um, that's hardly ever the case. Treatment for hyponatremia. Mild cases, we talk about restricting fluid intake. 
this would be in the condition of dilutional, and offering oral sodium supplements is ordered. In severe cases of depletional, then the approach may be to use isotonic IV solutions or hypertonic IV solutions, close monitoring of intake and output, and because of our concern with the confusion and fatigue and the muscle tremor, safety is a big issue. Also monitoring neurochecks closely because sodium shifts in the brain can have big consequences for cognition.